G'day Internet, welcome back to another video. These two machines here are my two Apple IIs, and they're machines I really like. This machine is the one that got the booty card recently, uh, and the Apple IIc I've had for a little while. Now, one accessory for these machines that I don't have is a joystick. Um, I've just simply never been able to get my hands on one at a reasonable price, uh, but what I do have is plenty of IBM PC 15-pin analog joysticks, like this one just here, which actually looks a lot like your uh, stereotypical Apple joystick anyway. So, seeing as I've got a bunch of these and they're a lot easier to get hold of, how can we make this work on these machines? With the IBM joystick and the Apple joystick both basically being analog devices, the conversion is actually pretty simple. And we can simply do it with a cable like this, uh, which has got some electronics and a little box, and that's about it. And it is something you can make yourself. This is a prototype that I was playing with, but let's actually make a proper one over at the workbench. So these are all the parts you're gonna need. You are going to want some multi-core cable. This is nine core, although we don't use all the cores in it. Uh, you're gonna want a male DB9 connector, a female DB15 connector, cases for both of them, uh, a couple of 680 ohm resistors, um, some 104 caps, uh, a couple of 500K uh, pots, uh, and a bit of perf board. So here is our bit of perf board uh, and the, our multi-core cable. I've already stripped it back and tinned six of the wires and cut the rest of them back. So that's all good. Uh, and we just simply want to start by soldering them down one edge. Now, I haven't soldered these in a particular order other than red for 5 volt is at the top and black for ground is at the bottom. Um, and just so you're aware, this is the Apple side of it and we then go into the IBM side, which will be that way. So with these now soldered in, um, just to make everyone, so we're all on the same page, we've got red for 5 volt, yellow is going to be button 0, white will be the X axis, um, blue will be the Y axis, uh, green will be button one, and black will be ground. Right, the next step is we want to put one of our 680 ohm resistors uh, going from button one to ground. So that here that's going from green to black, which is only one dot down. So we're going to make it kind of stand up. So that guy's in. We then want to take a, another 680 ohm resistor and we want to go from button zero to ground. Button zero is yellow. So we go from here to here. Just like that. So next we want to take one of our capacitors. These are commonly known as 104s, so they're 100 NF. Um, I'm going to put a graphic up on screen because it's going to be almost impossible to see, but these do actually have a polarity, and one of the legs will be marked as plus, which in this case is this one here. And the plus wants to go to our signal wire. So the first one we're going to put in is between the x-axis and ground, but we don't want to put the ground lead in just yet. So take the positive lead and put it into the x axis which for us is white so just pop that guy in there and solder it in right so he's now sitting like that we'll take a, another one and we will add it to the y-axis, so take the positive lead um, and put it into the x-axis, which is just there, 
for, so for us that is our blue line Right, so now we have uh, our two resistors in, our two capacitors in, but only joined with their positive leg, uh, and these are still sitting loose. Now the reason is, is we want to put those trim pots between the ground leg of the capacitor and our ground line. Right, I'm just going to jump in with a little bit of an edit here because I thought of a way better way of doing this basically. Right, so we're up to putting our two trim pots in. What we want to do is on each of them we want to bend the center leg out. So carefully bend it out. So it looks like that. Focus damn you. So it looks like that. Right, do that to both of them. Okay, where we're going to put these is, let's just take these legs and kind of carefully bend them out of the way. And we're up to the next row below our ground. And we're going to put this guy in here, like this. That resistor's going to get in the way. Just bend you out a little. All right. Okay, so one row across, put him in. Okay, let's solder that guy in to begin with. Right, and we're going to put the second one in right next to it, which is actually one more row across. Right, what we want to do now is actually separate out all those legs. So we want to cut the traces uh, in between here, here, and here. After that and before that doesn't really make that much difference, but because I've got bits hanging out the back now, this could be fun. Right, now we obviously want to test this with a multimeter, okay. We're good, we're good, and we're good. Right, next step, flip this back over. What we want to do, and you probably saw this one coming, let me just straighten these legs out a little, is we want to join the negative leg from our capacitors to the centre legs here. So I'm going to start by finding my flush cutters, right, and I'm going to trim off the excess leg on here because we just simply don't need it. Right, let's get some solder on those centre legs. And now we, what we want to do is carefully get that leg onto there, and a touch of solder, yep, is that on, yep that's on, and the other leg onto here. Right, trim that off. Right, and that bit's done. The last thing we want to do is from one leg of each of the trim pots, we want to join back to the ground line. So we just want to do that with a bit of a solder bridge, that's all. 
which can be easier said than done sometimes. And it doesn't really matter which one, um, as long as it's only one of each trim pot. Right, there we go. Right, so from this point forward in the video, if things look a little different, you'll know why, because I've just changed how I did this. We're now ready to put the IBM side of the cable onto the circuit board. Now, I want you to take a quick note here. Right. You've noticed I've changed up some of the colors. We no longer have a black wire because there is actually no ground that goes to the IBM. But instead we have a brown and an orange and they're longer. And this will make sense in a minute. So let's start by wiring things in and I'm gonna wire them in to this next row just here. Right, so I've sold them all in except for the orange and brown, and the reason they were left long is they also need to go to the 5 volt line, which as we know is our top row. So to make life a little easier, because they have to reach a little further, I kept them longer. Right, our circuit board is all wired up. Now we have to put some plugs on the end. Right. Here's our DB9 connector um, with, I've already pre-tinned the terminals and done the ends of the cable as well. So going from left to right, we start with our X axis, which for us is white. We then skip one and we go to ground. Oop, that's blue. Right, next is five volt, so red. And finally, pin one is button one. Uh, so that is our, oh, what's that? That's our green. Right, now flip it over. And the only ones we're interested in are the bottom, the two center ones. So we do have our which one's that? That will be our button zero. So button zero is yellow. And finally, because the only one left, blue, which should be uh, Y axis. And it is. Right, that's the Apple end all soldered up. Right, onto the IBM side of things and going from left to right. First is five, the first of our five volts, so that's red. Next one along should be, um, what is it? Button zero. So that should be our yellow wire. Uh, next one along is, uh, I believe, our Y-axis, so that I believe is, 
it's our y-axis, green, I think, no, blue, Right, next is another one of our 5 volts, so let's grab orange. Uh, I believe the next one is also one of our 5 volts, so in that case, it's in our case, that's brown. Right, next is, I believe, hang on, no, the next one's y-axis, or is it, no, it is, right, so what did I put in there? would have got them all upside down. <laughs> right, so that makes the third one along. Um, our x-axis. Right, okay, that actually makes more sense. Right, and our x-axis is white? One, two, three white right you should have gone back here that would have made life fun trying to play a game with the axes switched right then the final one is green which is I believe that's our one button All right, that is now that. Um, what all I'm, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna trim this perf board so it's not like, you know, this big. Uh, and then we can test it and tune it. Right, so I've pulled the 2C out. Uh, the joystick is plugged into the adapter which is plugged into the 2C. Um, for ease of use, I've got it plugged into an LCD and I've dropped to basic. So there's a little basic program, I guess you could say, that we want to put in this, and I'll put this in the description, but it is 10 uh, print PDL for paddle, uh, zero, uh, then quote space quote um, PDL one, so that will give us both our paddles, um, and then simply uh, colon go to 10 and if we run that it'll start displaying a bunch of numbers and these essentially are what's coming out of the x and y axis the buttons we don't need to worry about they just work but we need to tune these numbers and we do that with the two uh, trim pots that we put onto the circuit board so you can see our stream of numbers on the screen they are our x and y axis and what we want to do is we want to tune them to 127 each, which is obviously half of 255. But to be honest with you, anywhere between about 125 and 30 is fine. Uh, just make sure that if your joystick has um, trim adjustment on it, they're both set centered before you start doing this. So if I come in and adjust, start adjusting our potentiometers on the little circuit board, let's go that way. And ooh, we've gone too far. I'm adjusting the right hand one at the moment, by the way. Down, down, 129, 28. Bouncing between 27 and 28. Ooh, went too far. I don't think these are the greatest quality potentiometers in the world. Upper hair, come on. 
125, 26, that's close enough. And the other one, uh, wrong way. We're doing the left-hand side one now. 127, and the other one's gone back down to 115. Come on, up. All right, so oh, that's dropped down to 120 again. Twenty four, bit more, hundred thirty, hundred twenty eight, hundred twenty seven, hundred thirty. <clears throat> That's fine. So, if we now take our joystick and I go left, we get all zeros. If I go right, we get two five fives. If I go up, we get zero, and if I go down, we get two five five. So, that is the joystick now all tuned in. So there's no point in actually building an adapter and tuning a joystick if you're not actually going to use it. So let's spark up some Load Runner. And this is not a bad game to actually test this with um, because we can go left, we can go right, it's not moving around the place, like it's not automatically going left or right. Up, down works. Um, button works. Not really where I wanted it. Ah! And I died. I should point out I'm not very good at this game, but the joystick works like a charm. So I've simply gone and put the cases onto the DB15, DB9 um, plugs. Uh, and this is a little 3D printed box that I quickly designed, uh, which does have the cutouts for the two potentiometers. So if you ever need to retune it, you can. Uh, if you happen to make yours exactly the way I did, I will put the design for this box uh, up on Thingiverse uh, so you can find it there. It's not the most elaborate design in the world. But there you go. Uh, I quite like little projects that you can just make from bits without having to order parts from China and all the rest of it. All the bits for this I simply got from JCar down the street. So I now have the ability to play joystick games on both my Apple IIs and that's really cool. So if you like the video, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can now find me on Patreon, uh, link in the description if you would like to support the channel and I'll see you in the next one.